to go anywhere. I'm sick of travel. Oh no, no one can see me. I like it back. Okay. Right. Oh, that's the one. Morning, Andrew. You might be key to bus fare to this. Is this for general consumption? Is it? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you all and welcome to our service um, outside. It is um, usual that we have one of our services outside um, a year. It's normally sometime in um, June or July, um, but this year we thought we'd risk it and put it in September, but actually what a lovely day. So welcome to you all. As we come together, um, there is something that we do quite often at some of our services, a, a, an opening response. I will say, God is good, and you say, all the time. I say, all the time, and you say, God is good. God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Let's try that to greet one another this morning. God is good? All the time? All the time? God is good. Wonderful. As we come together today, um, we're not actually allowed to sing congregational hymns, and so the choir are going to sing for us this morning. Um, as many of you have got your masks on, um, if you mumble along with the words, none of us will know, um, but um, we're going to listen to the choir as they sing our opening hymn this morning. As we are gathered, Jesus is here.
are gathered together today outside of our church building to remind ourselves of all those who live their lives without a home to call their own. All who are homeless, struggling with life, separated from family. And we know that this year, above all years, will be especially difficult for them. The churches in Horsham normally work together and provide a homeless shelter from the beginning of November until the end of March. But because of COVID, this simply isn't possible this year. The way that the shelter has been run isn't possible under current social distancing rules and restrictions. It means that those who might have had access to one hot meal a day on a warm place to sleep are not able to do so. And although we as churches are looking at different ways of providing help and shelter, the plight of those uh, that we seek to help looks daunting. So as we gather today, we will hear stories of those who have been homeless. We seek to raise awareness of their needs and funds for local and national charities that work with those that are homeless. And we seek to acknowledge that all people are children of God and deserve to feel warm, safe and secure in a house they can call their home. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ walked this earth and relied on the hospitality of others, having nowhere to lay his head. Be with us now as we bring before you the needs of all who are without a home. Strengthen us to work for the help of others, and may they know your love for them in the midst of their situation. Give them hope to overcome, and love to mend their hearts and minds. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to listen to a story of um, Michael and um, his homelessness journey. Years ago, I found myself in the position of being unemployed and having to find um, new accommodation as a someone who'd been in constant employment. I was. Uh, been in the RAF for 12 years, I've been a bus driver in Cambridge for 12 years, found that the, the situation was something that I was unprepared for. It was tough to get through each day. Previously, I felt I was making a contribution to society, I was doing it worthwhile. I had gone through the um, ritual of claiming benefits, but I found that the actual act of claiming benefits was um, something that I was not very comfortable with. Before I, my, things turned around, I was um, about 15 months on the streets in Cambridge, finding places from night to night, a sleeping bag and a warm mat. I found um, park benches, um, under bridges, um, anywhere that was had some shelter and was quiet, well, it was as quiet as it could be on the street. And again, that was uh, an alien situation to me to find myself in. There was one particular instance where I was woken up at, uh, in the middle of the night and a male and a female who were trying to inject drugs and they were having problems and they were getting um, agitated and I just tried to make myself as inconspicuous as possible and um, hope that I wouldn't um, exacerbate their situation. Not knowing where I was going to find myself the following day, the following night, having to find um, somewhere to sleep each night. The weather, the bad weather, the cold, the rain to contend with. And for a while I was in denial um, I thought I could solve my problem by myself, but after nine months and having not been able to get back into employment and having to do some sofa, sofa surfing, I decided that uh, I did need help in my situation. So I turned up at um, Winter Comfort and with their help, I was able to turn things around and um, 
make a new start. They were looking for a, uh, a new cleaner to join their home uh, stream clean company. I decided that um, the time was right for me to get back into work. I applied for the job and fortunately I was um, able to, to get it. And since then, things have been um, much better for me. My self-esteem, um, I look forward to the routine of working, which was something that uh, was missing when I was out of work. And there is a, um, a reason for me to, to get out of bed every morning now. Well, my love of the theatre um, started when I did Shakespeare at um, secondary school. And then when I joined the Air Force, I was a member of various um, theatre groups, which you escape from the everyday situation and the feeling of um, when you have a reaction from the audience. Quite wonderful. My hope for the future is, is that I'm um, able to continue with, um, working for Overstream because they've turned my life around be able to help others who find themselves in a similar situation to the one I found myself in. That was Michael. Can I invite you to bow your heads in prayer? For the times that we have seen the need and yet pass by on the other side, we are sorry and seek your forgiveness. For the times when we have not seen the need, being too absorbed in our own problems, we are sorry and seek your forgiveness. When we have focused solely on ourselves, at the expense of others, we are sorry and seek your forgiveness. For the times we have not acknowledged your image in all your people, we are sorry and seek your forgiveness. Amen. God is a God of love and forgiveness. He heals us by his spirit. He restores us by his son. And he gives us new life when we come before him. Amen. We're now going to listen to our first reading. Uh, Irene, our first reading. Thank you. reading from the book of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. 
Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I are going to sing another hymn for us. Now, make me a channel of your peace. reading from Matthew. When the, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, apart, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also, then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to hear another homelessness story. This time, um, this is Irene's story. Sewing is my passion and designing. I've been working as a designer for 31 years, wedding dresses, dresses for special occasion and pageantry dresses. Start my business in April 2018 and my business failed so I couldn't pay one month rent. One night I stay in a car with a friend and the other night I stayed at a sofa, so it was back and forth, back and forth. And then my case worker said to come to the nine nine club, you know. And, and then I get the courage and say, you know what? Anybody could be homeless. It's just one. And people have passion for shoes and bags. My passion is my fabric. I love fabric because when I look at fabric. People see a plain piece of fabric, but when they take it and create it into something like a dress, a trousers, a top, it really feels. And it was a long wait because I'm in this nine nine club from since the 17th of August, and I just get my place on Monday. It was like all overwhelmed. Words can't explain. And this is like a start of a new chapter. Right now, I have my like, two sewing machines there. I'm going to continue to do my sewing and I'm getting ready to make this pageantry dress. Even though you're homeless, don't give up. You can pass that barrier, dust off that homeless jacket, and you'll be a free person. So, if just heard uh, the stories of Irene and Michael, two people whose stories are told, and two among many that you can find on YouTube if you search for homelessness stories. Michael, as you heard, was helped by a local organisation in Cambridge. He now has a job as a janitor and a flat of his own, an income and his self-confidence back. Irene became homeless because her dressmaking business failed. She was helped again by a, a local charity to her in Deptford, the Triple Nine Club. She now has a room in a shared accommodation and is working as a clothes designer. There are many, many other stories that you can find of people who've been helped by various local charities. From teenagers who left home at the age of 15, through to pensioners who were tricked out of their savings and their homes by family members. I couldn't watch many of them because each story is a hard one to hear, even knowing that these are the people who have been helped. These are the people who fought their way out of their situations to find a safe home again. The latest figures that I could find for the UK homelessness are verified in 2018. The total number of homeless in the UK was 319,837. This includes people in temporary accommodation, those that are put up in bed and breakfast by the council, those who are sleeping rough on the street, those who are in homelessness shelters, although 10% of that number is taken off to cover the overlap of those that are sleeping on the street, and it also includes people in social services accommodation. When you look at those statistics and they're broken down into regions and London boroughs, 
there were 29,591 homeless people in our area. Brighton and Hove ranked 19th in the whole country with 4,139 people in temporary accommodation and 178 people living rough on the streets. That was 2018. We know that the situation has got worse since those figures and this coming year will be especially difficult. We've heard two Bible readings this morning that state very clearly our Christian duty towards those who are in need, those who are hungry, those who are homeless. And there are among over 40 scriptural references to feed the hungry. Here at Holy Trinity, we do things already. We have our food boxes. And then the diocesan charity Family Support Work collects our donations and then share it out with those who are in need in East and West Sussex. We also regularly support Crawley Open House with our harvest gifts and we'll be doing so again this year and today with any monetary donations that you're able to spare. They work with the homeless in Crawley and Horsham. You might know that this month I pledged to, I, I'm sorry, I signed up to walk for Shelter, the charity, and I pledged to walk 26 miles during September. I've nearly finished, and later today I intend to complete the 1.3 miles that I have, but then I'm going to continue walking. I'm going to try and aim for 30 miles during September, a mile a day. That isn't an awful lot compared to what people go through who are living in the streets day after day. I want to thank all those people that have sponsored me in this undertaking. You have made, or will make, a significant donation towards Shelter and the work that it does nationally. But I'd like to challenge us. When we see the big collection boxes in supermarkets, could we pledge to put in one or two items a week? It's not a lot. We don't have to spend that much extra. I'm sure you all know the story of the granddaughter and the grandfather who were walking along the beach after a storm one morning. And the granddaughter sees a starfish that's struggling on the beach that's been washed up during the storm. And she picks it up and throws it back into the sea. She walks a few more steps and sees another starfish, so she picks that one up and throws that one back into the sea as well. And so this continues. She picks up a third starfish and throws it back into the sea. The grandfather looks up and sees starfish all along the beach. And he says, sweetheart, you can't help them all. Why are you bothering? The child picks up another starfish, throws it into the sea and says, well, I helped that one. One or two tins of beans in a supermarket collection box will help. Can I challenge us? When we see someone sitting, huddled on the street, might we offer to buy them a hot drink or a sandwich? If that is uncomfortable for you, you don't feel safe doing that, there's a story, something that hit me quite hard. At the end of August, I went into London. Claire's dad, Claire's dad is a cab driver, and as such has taken the knowledge and knows all the interesting and uninteresting parts of London. And he took us to London's meat market at five o'clock in the morning. It was enlightening to know that there was such a time in the day, for one thing, but also when we get down there to see the number of butchers' vans from Dorset and Cambridge, and there was one from South Wales that had all come into London to collect their meat. And after a walk around and a quick look at the entrance to, I think it's St. Thomas's Hospital. It was very early in the morning, so I'm not quite sure which one it was. We went to a bagel shop for early morning bagels. Outside, there was a young woman sitting on the floor, who as I walked past, she asked if I had any change. I didn't have any money, but like the Queen, I don't tend to carry cash these days. But I turned yeah, to her and said, I'm sorry, I don't. She then said to me, thank you. I stopped and looked at her and said, so 
Then why are you thanking me? Then why are you thanking me? I haven't given you anything. And she said, thank you for talking to me. Thank you for seeing that I'm here. Thank you for not ignoring me. My father-in-law then asked what I was doing talking to the woman and I said she'd asked for some change. So he went in the Bible shop and brought her a tea, a piece of co uh, carrot cake and a Bible. The tea had six sugars in it. Yeah, six sugars in it. But actually that conversation really affected me. That young lady was used to people completely ignoring her. She was invisible. She felt that the world hadn't seen her or her needs. And all I said was, I'm sorry, I can't help. And somehow that was enough. Our God says each and every person is a member of his family. He calls us his children. He says that every individual is valuable in his eyes. And no matter what we do for anyone, be it a cup of tea, a piece of carrot cake, or a Bible, no matter how small an act, it's as though we do it for him. May we acknowledge the image of God that is in all people and do whatever we can to help, support, and to alleviate the suffering of those in need. Amen. We're going to hear our choir again as they sing, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Heavenly Father, help us all to be humble when in the presence of your majesty and splendor, in the knowledge that you hold each one of us closely in your heart. Help us all to be non-judgmental and generous in the sight of suffering or poverty, so that we can understand situations, unfortunate consequences, and other people's predicaments. Help us all to offer kindness and consolation when experiencing the losses of others, treating others as we would treat our own, so that when we experience ourselves, experience it ourselves, we are comforted and made to feel loved. Help us all in every way through your words and your guiding lights, 
so that when the time comes we shall be elevated to spend the rest of our time at your high table beside you. Guide us so that we look around us with compassion upon those less fortunate than ourselves in health, wealth, upbringing, in racial, religious, gender or sexual definition, or simply the way they, their lives have worked out. We are all equal in your sight and all deserve the same treatment. Help us to feel your presence in our thoughts and in our lives, rewarding us for our good deeds and attitudes, and walk with us along the way, giving us hope in our hearts, with love in our hearts, with peace in our hearts, and most importantly, with you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our thoughts and our prayers spread from our families and friends throughout this land and across the world today and every day. We see suffering and persecution, some of which is carried out in mistaken understandings of the words of religious teachings, others through greed and the desire or corruption of power. We see the devastation of fire in America and Russia and the deliberate burning of forests in Brazil. We see political corruption and uprisings for the crushing of individuals in Belarus, Yemen and Bangladesh to name but three. We see the return of flooding and storms in the Caribbean and Southern American states and across many Central African countries. We see refugees and displaced people all over the world. And we watch on, seemingly powerless as the suffering, isolation and fear associated with COVID looms over us in many countries for a second time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone who has suffered shortages, fear or loss of any kind, food, water, property or loved ones, and we ask that you be with them. We pray for the nurses, doctors, care assistants and all support workers in the NHS and care homes, for teachers and tutors in our schools and colleges, for the paramedics, ambulance staff, police and other emergency services, for your church and all those who work in it or provide support. We pray for the elderly and the lonely, for individuals and families in cramped living conditions with the threat of lockdown looming. And especially at this time, for those who are homeless or faced with the threat, and for the people who supply resources, both money, but also just as importantly, their time. So many people are going through such tough times at the moment and have done for so long. Hold their hands, place your arm around their shoulders, hear their pleas and make them and their loved ones feel strength in their beliefs in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for everyone who is unwell in any way, for those who have gone on from this world to be with you, and for those who mourn or miss them. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary, sorry, Richard, Wilfred, and all the saints, we offer you these prayers in the full and trusted knowledge that you will hear because we ask in true faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer and please say whichever version comes most naturally to you. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
just before our final prayer this morning, can I thank you all for coming and um, being part of this service. Can I thank you all for not throwing conkers at me during the sermon. Thank you very much. That's appreciated. Can I thank um, our choir musicians for the work that they've done and for leading us in our singing. And um, thank you to Peter as well for um, live streaming our service this morning. A final prayer for us all. May the Father, from whom every family on earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those who you pray for, now and evermore. Amen.